What if I could make an object disappear right before your very eyes? Would you be impressed? Well, it turns out that mathematically, this is actually pretty easy to do. In fact, I'm going to guess that most of you already know how to do it. In algebra, we learned that if you take a variable x and you divide it by x, that the x's cancel. They, in fact, disappear. Ta-da! All right, I can tell you're not very impressed. After all, we're just talking about a letter x. We don't really mean that it disappears. We're not really talking about a physical object. Or are we? Remember that in math, that we can define x as anything we want. So suppose we define x as a person. What would happen if you divided one person by another? Well, it turns out that mathematically, they would cancel and Ta-da! They have disappeared. But do we really mean that? Have these people really disappeared? If we could create some kind of machine that did this, are we saying that the people are gone? Well, it turns out that mathematically, in the real sense that a person has existed, they are now gone. Or, in fact, what's happened is they've been reduced to the number one. Now, what do we mean by that? Are we talking about one person? So does the person still exist? In fact, no. This isn't one person. This is just the number one. And one person divided by another person has become just the number one, a dimensionless thing. Let's perform another magician's trick, a transformation. I'm going to transform three people into socks. Ready? Take three people, multiply it times a unit conversion of two socks per person. The people cancel, and you have, ta-da, six socks. So you're going to say that I haven't really converted people into socks, and that I'm really just looking at the amount of socks that I would need for three people. And I won't argue with you. However, if you look on the right side of the equation, there's nothing about people here at all. It's just six socks. And again, mathematically, we have made these people disappear and transform them into socks, six socks. If you don't believe me, take a look at this algebraic problem. Take 3y times 2z over y. The y's will cancel, and you get 6z. There's no mention of y here on the right side of the equation at all. It has mathematically disappeared. You can do the same kind of transformations from one unit of measurement to another. For example, let's convert 2 grams into kilograms. Start with the grams, and mathematically we're going to divide grams by grams so that they cancel. We're going to convert to kilograms, so that goes on the top. Mathematically, we're canceling grams and multiplying times kilograms. We now put the numbers in to make the statement true and do out our math. You get 0 0.002 kilograms. You can do the same kind of transformation in reverse. Let's start with kilograms. Cancel kilograms and multiply times grams. Notice that the kilograms cancel and we are left with a unit of grams. Put in the numbers that are appropriate and make the unit conversion true. There are a thousand grams per one kilogram. Notice that this is the opposite to the way that it was written in the above problem. Now do out your math and you get 3,500 grams. At this point, you're probably thinking, that's an awful lot of work simply to convert grams into kilograms. And that's a calculation you might even be able to do in your head. But don't hit the off button just yet. I'd like to show you that this method of solving problems is perhaps the most important mathematical concept you can learn that will help you in any class that you ever have that involves math. Let's look at a physics problem, for example. How many seconds does it take a sound wave to travel a distance of 565 meters, given the speed of sound is 340 meters per second? With problems like this, what you first want to do is establish where are you starting. In this case, we're starting with the 565 meters. You then want to figure out what are you trying to find. In this case, we're trying to find seconds, which is the unit of time. 
Another thing to look for is given information. In this case, a conversion factor. The speed of sound converts meters into seconds and seconds into meters. Let's see how that looks. First, write down the number that you're going to start with. In this case, 565 meters. You're going to multiply this times the conversion factor, seconds over meters. It's written this way so that the meters cancel. Notice that when you write it this way, you will be solving for seconds, which is exactly what you're trying to find. Now plug in the, the conversion factor in the appropriate way so that the units match up with the numbers. Notice that it's one second for 340 meters. When you divide by 340, you will have your answer in seconds. It takes 1.66 seconds for the sound wave to travel a distance of 565 meters. Congratulations, you just solved a physics problem. Here's an example of a typical chemistry problem. What's the volume in centimeters cubed of a 100 gram rectangular aluminum solid? Given the density of aluminum is 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. Again, let's solve this using our units, and we're going to start with the 100 grams. This is the number which has only a sole unit. Let's look at where we're trying to go. We're trying to end in cubic centimeters, or the unit of volume, and we're given a conversion factor, the density, 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. We start with the initial number, cancel grams, and we have centimeters cubed on the top. Notice that the grams cancel, and we're left with the unit that we're trying to find. So we're going to plug in the numbers appropriately. There are 2.7 grams per one cubic centimeter. So we're dividing by the 2.7, giving us an answer of 37 centimeters cubed. Let's take this one a little bit further. If the volume of the rectangular solid is 37 centimeters cubed and the length of one side is 6 centimeters, what is the area of the remaining side in centimeters squared? In this case, we're given two starting numbers, centimeters cubed and centimeters. We're trying to find the area in centimeters squared. So let's just take a look at our units to see if there's a way to solve for centimeters squared using them. If you take centimeters cubed divided by centimeters, you indeed get centimeters squared. Let's try that. Divide 37 by 6, and we get 6.17 centimeters squared, the area of the remaining side. So what we've done here is, I think, kind of cool. We solved the problem simply by looking at the units. But on a deeper level, there's something also that's pretty wild here. We've taken a three-dimensional object and we've reduced it to a two-dimensional thing. We have lost a dimension. So let's take this a step further. If the area is 6.17 centimeters squared, what's the area in millimeters squared? So again, we're going to start with a 6.17 centimeters squared. We're trying to convert to millimeters squared. So in this case, we know that we need to start with the 6.17 centimeters squared. We're going to cancel centimeters and convert to millimeters. Most of you know that there are 10 millimeters per centimeter. But if we stop here, you're only canceling one of the centimeters squared. And the result would be something like a centimeter millimeter, which isn't really what we're looking for. We need to multiply again times this unit factor. So we get centimeters squared on the bottom, canceling centimeters squared on the top. And the result is an answer in millimeters squared. Or another way to write this would be 10 millimeters squared per one centimeter squared. But why are there 100 millimeters squared in 1 centimeter squared? Let's take a look. If you have 1 centimeter squared, in other words, 1 centimeter in the shape of a square, it'll measure 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter. This is the same as 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. So if we divide the centimeter squared into millimeters squared, there will be 100 millimeters squared in one centimeter in the shape of a square. Now can you picture it?
Let's try one more problem. This one's a bit of a challenge, so bear with me. If the area of one aluminum atom is 0 0.0642 nanometers squared, approximately how many atoms will fit on a square millimeter? Starting with a square millimeter, we need to find out how many atoms will fit on it, and we're given a conversion factor of 0 0.0642 nanometer squared per one aluminum atom. We start with one millimeter squared. The appropriate conversion factor is millimeter squared per atom. However, we're not given that conversion factor. We're given the area of one aluminum atom in nanometer squared. So let's convert that into millimeter squared. It's 0 0.0642 nanometers squared per one atom. We're going to multiply that times the conversion factor of millimeters per nanometer. But remember we need to square this because we're talking about area. And we're going to square not only the units but also the numbers, giving you that in one millimeter squared there's 1 times 10 to the 12th nanometers squared or 6.42 times 10 to the negative 14th millimeters squared per one atom. Plug that into your conversion factor and divide. You'll get 1.56 times 10 to the 13th atoms per millimeter squared. All right, so that's it for now. The best thing you can do from here is to practice that as many times as you can until you get really good at it.